Give me a Monday hero. Caleb Sarong is my Monday hero. The Dockers. I thought the Dockers were gone. I thought they were done. Talk about the dogs another time. But when, you, when, when the chips are down and, you, and everything's against you and you think, we're not playing good footy, you've got to take a stand, you've got to do stuff. Caleb Sarong, not for the first time. I don't think he's had a, a, a blazing year. But when I see him play games like this, Jared, I look at him and go, God, look at him. He's setting tone in the midfield. That's where it all starts and ends, Jared, in the midfield. I thought he was terrific, absolutely terrific. And the Dockers, they were... Oh, they, they just steam, steamrolled straight through the, the dogs on the weekend. It was really, really poor. So, Caleb Sarong, he was fantastic. Nice. Because he never really had an AFL team, we got to pick our own. So I, I picked Geelong. And I, because they were, they were good at the time and, you know, Gary Ablett Senior was playing and, um, you know, I used to love Buddha hocking and Kenny Hinckley was actually my favourite player. Um, off half-back. Number 29. Um, yeah, in, intercept mark. Um, yeah, so, I, yeah, I used to... Every Saturday morning, I used to sit down and pick the Geelong team and then um, <laughs> hope they were on the radio that afternoon. There's yeah. only one game on the radio and every game played at, um, you know, two, oh, 12 o'clock over here mm. on a Saturday afternoon. So the game put the game of the, of the week on and, and listen. Yeah. A fantastic story told in our face-to-face -face series and rather perfectly tonight, <laughs> Justin Longmuir and Ken Hinckley are together. Justin, welcome to 360. Thanks for having me, lads. See, Kenny, everyone had five and 32, but the really con the real connoisseur, <laughs> they had 29. Uh, he made an early decision on 29, didn't he? It was a good decision, 29. JL's a great choice. <clears throat> I think you may have missed the cup, the top of the pops, though, with uh, GA. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, mate, I went early and um, it's such an attacking team, I thought I'd pick a Dow defender to go with as my best player. So, <laughs> you, your number came up, mate. Very nice, very nice. How, how, did, you, how did you get your team back, back focused and, and, and getting, getting them to play the way you wanted to play? And congratulations, your first final series in, in charge. What, what was the trigger for them to come back to Melbourne and do that to the Western Bulldogs? Yeah, thanks, Robbo. Um, yeah, it's great to be back in the finals as a club. Uh, I think it was set up pretty early in the week with some really clear focuses. Um, yeah, we haven't been playing our best footy, but, um, you know, tried to sell the players some excitement around what our best footy looks like. And, um, yeah, really last week we just focused on ourselves, and that was set up, um, as I said, with a couple of really clear focuses that allow us to play our best. And I think getting back to really basic role play and um, having an eye to the we... Um, and the team and what can each player bring to the team and, you know, without that connection between our roles, we're nothing really. So, um, you know, we had some players that were out of a little bit of form and had some interrupted years and really just tried to simplify it for those guys and get them back to focusing on what's important. And, yeah, it was a really um, promising performance on the weekend and one hopefully we can build off. So when you say we're going we're gonna to focus on on certain parts of the game. When you say that, Justin, is that focusing on surge football, exciting football, move the ball, or is it focused more on defensively, play your role? What, what's, what's your focus? What's your focus as a coach? Well, I had to start around the ball. Um, we felt like we were a little bit safe um, with our ability in the contest and the ability to drive at, drive at the game. So it started, it started there. Um, and then we just tried to get a little bit of mojo back with our ball movement. I, I think it's been pretty well documented. Everyone's got the same opinion, but we've just been a little bit, little bit safe, and we've become a little bit, um, I suppose, boring going inside 50. So we wanted to wanted to um, bounce a little bit more out of our back half, but we also wanted to bring our forwards into the game and give them best opportunity by lowering our eyes and connecting a little bit more going inside 50. So. Um, there was a mixture of contest and ball movement because I think you know, defensively we've been pretty strong all year and, and that's held, in, been held, held us in pretty good stead. But the other two areas have let us down at times. So when you say you've got safe, boring football, who, who takes ownership of that? You as coach or, or, or the playing group? Or how does a group of, how does a group of players go, right, we're sort of falling into safe, boring football mode? <coughs> 
Oh, me? Yeah, I'd take ownership of that, absolutely. Um, yeah, maybe a couple of our focuses have, been, have shifted from um, our ball movement and shifted in other, other areas. And I think given the situation we're in, you know, top four, sometimes you can play to protect that position on the ladder rather than, um, you know, lean into it and, and take it on. And probably just felt like we'd become a little bit safe um, with the position we've found ourselves in the season and tried to save it rather than, um, yeah, like I said, lean into it and, and take the game on. So, um, yeah, there were some good signs on the weekend that we got back to our best. But yeah, the most exciting thing, I suppose, is that we've got plenty of growth left in us. Justin, did you, did you take a moment to acknowledge that you've qualified for finals with that 13th win? Not really, Jared. no, because I still think the season's ahead of us. Um, yeah, and the most important week we're going to play this year is, is this week. So, yeah, really moved on and you know, now we've locked it in. It's about qualifying as high as we can and in as good a form as we can. So, really, that's where my mindset has um, stayed and stayed, yeah. What about the, the captain? What, what sort of timeline is Nat Fife on at the moment? <clears throat> Yeah, I had a really good session on Saturday. Um, I thought he was going to knock on my door today, actually, and put his hand up. But, um, yeah, playing the patient game and hopefully against GWS he'll be um, declared fit to play. And, yeah, we're looking forward to getting him back in the team. I'm not going to ask you about Rory Lobb because I reckon you'd be sick and tired of being <laughs> asked about Rory Lobb. My, my Monday love this week was Caleb Sarong and he's one of those barometer types that every, every team has. And you think, God, if Sarong's on, he sends a message, the young fella... Not so young anymore, but he sends a message to the rest of the group. How impressed were you with his performance on the weekend? Yeah, I thought it was some of his best footies, particularly in that first half of the season, to be honest, Robbo. Um, and you're right, he is a bit of a barometer because he brings the energy around the ball that drives us and, and gets us going. Um, you know, he's yeah, super impressive player, but he's a you know, super impressive young man. Um, and he's, he's in our leadership group and... You know, a big, a big part of his leadership is, you know, what he does on the field to get us going. And, yeah, you know, I thought that first half on the weekend was superb from him. Ken Hinckley and Justin Longmuir are with us. So we've heard about Nat Fife and his timeline to return. The man who was the skipper on the weekend, Alex Pearce, he gave Fox Footy a bit of an insight by wearing the mic. This was him after the toss of the coin and the words to inspire his teammates. Best job. John, mate. Hey, John. How are you, son? Good, how are you? Thank you. Yeah. Still two headed? No, not two headed. <laughs> Alex, you're calling the yeah. Tails. Tails is cool. Tails it is. Yeah, we go down. Good. Yeah, that's the first quarter, eh? That's all we that's all we worry about. That first 30 minutes. Just implement what we've what we've spoken about all week. Our role play gets it done. You don't need to do anything more than that. Play our role, play with passion and do it together. But we know it's hard work, isn't it? We know we're going to need each other and it's going to be tough and when it gets tough, we need each other even more. So make sure, first five, first quarter, we keep going, nail the contest and stick together. So stick together, we'll be right. Let's go. Play to win. Play to win. Let's go. We're going at the game, we're playing to win. Our coach is still with us, Justin Longmuir. You've got a lot of shared heritage with Josh Kennedy. What a way to go. Oh, unbelievable. Um, yeah, I went to the game yesterday and, and watched his last game. And, yeah, he looked like he'd play another 100 more the way he played yesterday. Um, yeah, we've got him this week, so I'm glad he's not playing this week. <laughs> he, um, he's just a superstar. And, um, you know, I've never seen anyone so loved by their teammates because, um, you know, he works so hard on his game and... Everything he did was for the team. So, yeah, it's, he's going to... Yeah, he's much loved over here and um, I'm sure he'll go on to bigger and better things if that's possible. The other Josh Kennedy from Sydney did his hamstring on the weekend. We know his situation. When you go in as coach, how do you possibly learn how to deal with decisions on champions of your club, Kenny, when you might say to him or you might have to say to him, hey, thanks for your for 14 years but we're moving on from you. How? I'm not saying that's going to happen, but how difficult is that discussion? Justin, I guess you would have just lived that to some degree with David Mundy across a number of months? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a, you know, a sad day when, he, when he's not around the football club. He's been a massive support for me. 
um, yeah, to some degree, he's been like an on-field coach. And, um, yeah, I can't thank him enough for everything he's done for our club. And, yeah, we'll get a bit of a runway into his exit um, over the next few weeks, which is going to be um, yeah, great for him to be able to go out on his terms and um, great for the club to be able to send him out the right way. I know they're opponents in the Premiership run, Justin, but you know the Collingwood circumstance will is on your way to Fremantle. Are you, are you admiring of what they're doing at the moment? Uh, yeah, I am admiring them, just not, not necessarily because I, I, I work there um, or I've got people I know there, but just yeah, for them to be able to um, yeah, rise to the challenge at the end of the games is super impressive and... Um, yeah, they've been able to come from behind and been able to hold on and um, just re they look really organised at the end of games and they, they look like they're, they're all on the same page and know what to do. And I can understand why with some of those senior players um, that they've got on their on their list and in their team, it's, um, they're very they're very footy smart. Um, they're great leaders in tight moments and um, yeah, you can just see those guys driving the younger guys. So yeah, it's been it's been um, yeah good to good to see from afar. Justin, good luck finishing your work. Uh, good luck for the Derby and, yeah, the push for the top four. We'll see you in a few weeks. Thanks, lads.